ever. This uh, gospel passage has traditionally been used to defend prayer, to defend time dedicated to prayer and even lives dedicated to prayer. The, uh, as the world accounts prayer, it is any time for the world spent in prayer is a waste of time, right? And, so, and to be clear, this is not the Christian understanding of prayer, but the world accounts prayer as something that can be dis- discarded and dispensed with, but this is not the Christian belief. And unfortunately, as we live in the midst of the world, sometimes I, I can say for myself, I start to take on some of that attitude myself, and I guess I'd be surprised if if any of you have not experienced that temptation to let go of prayer. But that's what this gospel passage is fundamentally about. Because Mary of Bethany, she sits at the feet of Jesus and she listens. She enters into communication and conversation with Jesus And it is conversation with Jesus that is the essence of Christian prayer. And Mary emphasizes the listening part. And just as prayer can be considered, I can't even say the word, superfluous, superfluous, as that can be considered a waste Sadly, it seems to me in our culture and time, we often consider listening to be a waste, right? That it is not the case that when we're in a mature conversation with others, that we're simply waiting for our turn to talk, right? Listening is extremely significant. Listening is valuable, and it's something we ought to incorporate into our prayer lives, listening to Jesus. And, and, and this, this fundamental stance of listening first and responding to Jesus in prayer gets at a crucial starting point for all Christians, that everything that we do, any good that we do, is a response to some blessing that God has given us. There's nothing we do, nothing we initiate that is good. Everything that we do is a response to God's goodness. And so in prayer, it is crucial that we are listening to God and responding. Now, I admit it can, as challenging as listening can be in our sort of regular conversations with regular folks, it can be even more challenging in our relationship with God. And there's different ways to listen to God. I'm not going to get into any of the more advanced ways, but I'm going to give you the simple, foolproof way of listening to God, right? The surest way we can incorporate the listening component of our, of our, of our prayer is a thoughtful reading of sacred scripture, a thoughtful reading of sacred scripture, especially passages from the gospel, right? The four biblical accounts of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, these are, are, in addition to being the inspired word of God, as all of the Bible is, these record the very words of divine incarnate second person of the most holy trinity and so whenever we want to hear god's voice it is absolutely guaranteed when we go to scripture especially the gospels and and read prayerfully thoughtfully a passage from scripture then we are hearing God. It is God's word to us. And then when we've heard God's word, when we've heard God's word, then 
It can lead to insights, inspirations, and that can lead to a, a conversation with God about how can I incorporate this word into my own life? How can I, how can I take this into my own life? And so much of the preaching that I'm going to do for the, the rest of, of today is about how we incorporate Mary of Bethany's devotion to prayer into our own lives. And when we do respond to God's word, when we do the speaking part of our conversation with God, we often find ourselves doing one of four things. And I use the acronym PRAY to remember what those four things are. They are praise, repentance, asking, and thanking. So you've seen a problem with my acronym, right? I have to, I have to contort it. So the, you thank. That's how I make it work. You thank. You thank. And then we have to spell you out. You, know, you thank. Okay, so praise, repentance, asking, you thank. Okay? Praise. Praise is the most significant kind of prayer. It holds a primacy of place. Sadly, it is the one, in my experience, and I think others, were the most easily let go of. And I think it's because praise is the most selfless of all these kinds of prayer. With praise, we simply give God the glory and honor that is God's due because God is God. It can have nothing to do with me, and that's probably why it's so difficult for many of us to do. Praise is extremely significant and, and really an essential part of our prayer life. The Gloria that, we, we, that was sung at the beginning of Mass is largely a prayer of praise, glory to God in the highest, right? Um, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Um, the, the Sanctus, or holy, 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 that we'll pray later, is even more exclusively a prayer of praise. I'm going to be working with um, the, the missal that you'll find in your pew. And uh, some of the reason they've appeared in the pews recently is that there are some valuable prayers in, towards the end in just the last uh, 30 pages or so. Some very helpful prayers. And, and a prayer of praise that I use regularly and I encourage you to consider for your own personal prayer is on page 1021, and it's called The Divine Praises, and you can find it right there in the middle. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. It's a litany of praise. And, 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 if you, and so I encourage you to use that. I use it. I've had it memorized for probably a de couple decades now. And it's really handy. If you can memorize that and have that at the ready, um, that's a terrific prayer of praise that you can incorporate into your own prayer lives. Repentance. Repenting, of course, includes asking forgiveness for our sins. We use it um, at the beginning of Mass, the confitier. I don't usually use that option, but I did today knowing that I would speak of this. The confitier, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that is a prayer of repentance, right? Asking God for forgiveness. The act of contrition that we always use in confession is a prayer of repentance, though we uh, we sometimes um, we sometimes don't know all the options available to us. So on 997, page 997, you'll see three forms of the act of contrition. There's the the oldie fashiony one is listed first. It uses the word heartily sorrow, sorry. Sometimes people uh, make the terrible mistake of saying I'm hardly sorry, but it's heartily sorry. Um, 
The second one is a more contemporary version. And then the third is probably Father's favorite, and I encourage you to embrace it as your own. Sometimes Father's in the confessional for a long time, and he'd, uh, he's heard the act of contrition several times, and he just assumed get to the point, and it's the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And that is, that is beautiful. That's all I need to hear. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So those are some of the options available for, to you in prayers of repentance. The easiest one is probably asking, right? Asking. And the mass, the prayers of the faithful, these are prayers where we are asking God. We'll pray those after the creed. You've probably heard the expressions intercession or interceding or petition or petitioning. Generally, as a basic principle, an intercession is something we do for somebody else. A petition is something that I do on my own behalf. So when we're praying for others, that's an intercession. Praying for myself, that is a petition. There is a lovely prayer of petition on page 989 in, in the hymnal. And when you read this prayer, you are probably going to recognize that you are not as holy as St. Thomas Aquinas. It is a beautiful prayer of petition on page 989. And the reason you'll recognize that you're not as holy as St. Thomas Aquinas is that when I, and I suppose most of us, ask for things, chances are they tend to be maybe not all that significant. St. Thomas Aquinas in this prayer in preparation for mass is begging God in sort of a wholly selfish way, I would say, Lord, I want to love you as much as I possibly can. I want to be as holy as you are willing for me to be. Give me all the helps. Give me all the graces I need to be holy and to benefit from this Mass that we are celebrating. So it's a beautiful prayer of petition, asking not for conventional things we might ask for, but asking to really to be able to benefit from the sacrifice of the mass. The, uh, the, the final one that I'm, I'm going to mention is the you thank, right? You thank. Prayers of thanksgiving, or thanksgiving is to God. God is, and then in the mass especially, if you, if you pay attention, hopefully you've noticed that the Eucharistic prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving, is addressed to God the Father. So we have the preface dialogue, the Lord be with you and with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. And then the preface generally, I go on to thank God for something and then explain what, what I'm grateful for. And I'm speaking for all of us when, when I'm praying that prayer. But that is, um, that is a prayer of thanksgiving in the mass we especially in this context and hopefully authentically in our lives are ultimately thankful for Jesus for all that Jesus has done for us for forgiving our sins reconciling us to God and being made present to us in the Eucharist and so it is laudable and customary for folks to pray prayers of thanksgiving after receiving communion, whether immediately after receiving communion, maybe, maybe when Father or the deacon is purifying the vessels and there's some quiet to say prayers of thanksgiving, thanking God for the gift of Holy Communion, even after Mass, some folks will stay and pray. These are all beautiful, laudable customs. There is a beautiful prayer of thanksgiving on page 990. It's called the Anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. And it goes on. A beautiful prayer of thanksgiving on page 990. So I hope you'll familiarize yourself with some of these prayers and, um, and, and use them in a way that is beneficial to you. So... 
May Jesus give each of us the graces we need to imitate Mary of Bethany by entering into heartfelt prayer to Jesus, especially during this Holy Mass, during which Jesus will come to us in the most blessed sacrament.